Well, hi, and thanks for joining me here in my shop today. So I've been in here for, I don't know, maybe half an hour, 45 minutes, trying to figure out what the story is with these big hot resistors. This one's not so hot. It was hot, not hot anymore. So it's been very, very difficult uh, to sort this out, as always is the case when the components are not connected directly to an identifiable thing. Now, these components are on terminal strips, and there's wires and all kinds of stuff. So I spent a long time coming up with this fantastic diagram here. <laughs> and the last thing I wrote on it was that, B+. Plus. I realized after studying this long enough the B plus from the power supply is brought up to this point. This point right here. This point, which is kind of like uh, these two resistors are in series, but the B plus is fed at the connection point here. So what that means is the B plus is splitting and heading this way from here. Could be other B plus lines coming up in here, but just these resistors that are overheating this one this one maybe this one too eventually is what i'm trying to, to get a grip on why are these overheating and how much overheating are they doing enough to liquefy or soften up the paint that's on them and the reading is up around 70 degrees c which is just a little too high in my mind 50 is kind of as high as i would want to go maybe 60 70, 80 is getting pretty high. And clearly a resistor was not intended to ever get this hot. They put paint on it that would deteriorate at that temperature. Whatever happened to this one has gone away because whatever made it hot isn't making it hot anymore. So with the B plus coming up to this point, splitting this way and that way, we can now examine more carefully. And I also, by the way, I didn't really say this. I did manage to identify each of the components up in here by number. I have all the numbers written here, R42, R38. What a tough go getting that straight. But I'm pretty sure I do. So the interesting thing is this resistor goes nowhere except from the B plus to the screen connection on this tube. This is a 6K6 expander tube, and I don't think I've even talked about it yet, but there's a circuit inside this radio, a two-tube circuit called the expander circuit. You switch it in and out with this switch what exactly is being expanded you know i have a guess but what for sure is going on i don't know but in any case that's what this resistor is doing this is the resistor handling the shield current shield 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 current shield <laughs> screen screen current screen current yeah, i have been in here too long already handling the screen current coming from this tube so with such a simple arrangement b plus and screen connection, why in heaven's name would this tube overheat? Only because the screen current is high. It's the only possible reason. Why would the screen current be high? So I've measured the B plus high in this radio. We know the power supply has been monkeyed around with a little bit, but in fact, having read a little more in the schematic, I am now unsure once again about what, what all this is that's down here that I concluded earlier must be the substitute resistors for the field coil. I think that's still the case, but I'm not 100% sure. In fact, you know, I should never be 100% sure about anything at all, ever. 99.9 <laughs> is okay, but 100, no, that's too far. Don't ever be that sure. Okay, so going back to this, and the high B+, plus, where's it all coming from, Jim? Remember a long time ago, right off the bat? This tube here, down here. This is the 5U4, the rectifier tube. In a socket, that's this 5Y3. 5U4, 5Y3. The results of switching out a 5Y3 and putting in a 5Y4 is you have a tube that can conduct a lot more current. It doesn't have as much of a voltage drop inherent in it. Perhaps the situation in this radio is the 5Y3 is being pushed pretty hard and has a significant voltage drop across it. Maybe it's running close to its limit, in fact. When you swap that out and put this guy in, th this guy doesn't have the voltage drop. So, voltage not dropping, high B+. High B+, 
screen currents high screen currents high screen current resistors overheating that's the story that is my story so I think what we got to do is we got to find a 5y3 to plug in here and see if we can't cool this whole baby down that way I think that's what it boils down to the consequences of changing the rectifier tube right so with that in mind I'm gonna go find a 5y3 I'm sure I've got some well unfortunately I do not have any 5y3s I have a 5y4 which I think is basically the same as a 5y3 only wired differently the sockets wired differently and then I've got 10 5u4s so 5u4s are very common in the world today 5y3s are disappearing or have essentially disappeared so getting used to subbing a 5u4 in for a 5y3 is a good idea I think and here's here's my chance to study this a little further so just obviously and I, you can read about this just swapping the tube in putting a u4 in for the y3 uh, you'll get an increase in the B plus so much so that it starts cooking these tubes these uh, resistors well apparently so apparently so what happened to this one I think is a different story I think this guy took a beating because of a shorted capacitor but I can't be sure about that either who knows what happened in the past so the only way if this is true the only way to calm this radio down and cool down these resistors maybe including this one is to is to lower the B plus now that's a little bit easier said than done you can burn off some of it with a resistor but this, this creates problems in the power supply. The power supply's regulation uh, is not nearly as good then because you have a resistor in there. So I'm going to read up on how to use a 5U4 instead of a 5Y3. There's all kinds of stuff that people have written. I've read about this before. So all kinds of stuff people have written. I'm going to avail myself of that information and see if, in fact, we can calm down the B plus here. Okay, so once again, persistence has paid off, and I found this in the back of one of my own radios. Yes, I pulled this out of my own radio. A Pi, a Pi radio, really nice radio. 5Y3, it certainly says on it. Found one. So my objective is to put this in the radio and compare the B plus against the 5U4. And I realize that this radio is not operating in its normal state at all. It's got the two 45 output tubes are sitting over here. So we have the heater load of the 245s, not impressed on the transformer. It's not going to really change things anyway. But the plate load of the 245s is significant. And that load is placed on this power supply, pulling down its voltage for sure. Some amount, I don't know how much. I can't know until I run this with the amplifier. So the first stage we're doing here is simply to find out what the voltage difference is under this operating circumstance when you go from 5U4 to 5Y3 and I'm tempted to not even put it on full voltage because we already know the 5U4 is going to chuck 420 volts into this thing. Ah, that's not good at all. So but we will do something to compare them and see if it really does knock down the voltage. And according to what I read I could expect a 10 to 15 volt change. That's nothing. That, that's not what I'm looking for. First thing though, we're going to test that 5Y3 to here before sticking it in the radio. Now this has come out of a working radio, one of my favorite radios in fact. I've got this set now for 5Y3. Of course it's got two two parts in it, so there's two tests. Let's just double check. HR 06000 0000 and zero on the bias, 22 on the English, English. Switch on. Over here. Got something written on the top of it here. It's not me who wrote that. We're going to find out. 5 volt filament voltage. Short, check. Looks good. Push uh, the rectifier button. This should come up in the good. And it's in the good. 
Now the other half of the tube, you just have to change the 6 to a 4. And we drop the English just a little bit. 18. Still way up in the good. So this is a good 5Y3. Now back to the radio over here. So what we want to do now is we want to operate the set with a 5U4 and then operate it with a 5Y3. See the difference without blowing the thing up. So I think I'm probably going to do this on restricted power. That's not the best way to do it because the supply voltage to the radio will be a little bit different, but we can monitor that. We can monitor that right on this guy here so we don't get fooled. Here. So I've got this meter set to read the B plus thousand volt scale off of one terminal of the filter capacitor. Whether that's that's not the highest and not the lowest. I think it's in the middle of the voltage. It kind of cascades down a little bit as it goes through the filtering and that. No problem though, no, because this is a comparative test. I think I'm ready. Oops, keep my eye on the lights. There we go, lights are coming on normal. You can see the B plus building on the meter here. Look at it go. Now it's going to go high and it's going to come down a little bit. It's going to get pulled back down as the tube uh, currents begin to, to pull on it. So you actually see the effect of pulling current from the power supply. You can see it right here. That knocked 50 volts off it. So 345 with a restriction. I just I can assess the restriction by how bright those two lights are. Okay, I'm trying to memorize that. That's crazy. That, that's crazy. In a much better way. Just read this number: 100 volts on the outlet. So with a 100 volt supplied and a 5U4, you get 340. 340. I'll just write that down. 340. 343. Okay. Now we're going to shut it off, swap out the rectifier tube with the 5Y3, and just turn it back on and see what this number comes to. Sets off. How hot do you think that tube got back there? Could have got pretty hot. Now I noticed a kind of interesting thing, going through all my old radios trying to find a 5Y3 and what I kept finding were 5Y4s. They can't plug a 5Y4 and a 5Y3 are the same tube with a different pin arrangement. So I have that option here to switch this. But most of the stuff I read said switch your 5Y4 to a 5Y3. which quite make sense to me. Does that just make an absolutely sure it says 5Y3, which it does. If it wasn't a 5Y3, it probably wouldn't have done too well in the tube tester. In she goes. Okay, 340. What does it come to? First it jumps up to about the same. About the same. Now it's heading down. It's heading for the same zone. Uh, that's not much different. But here's the thing. If I start pulling current out of this power supply, more current, this may drop much more quickly with a 5Y3 than it would with a 5U4. Um, 
it's particularly neat if this set is really working the 5Y3 out towards the end of its capacity. So what I'm saying is we can't be absolutely sure here even doing this test. They don't have a whole set plugged in. They don't have the 45s pulling. So 330 is better than 3... 338 is better than 343 by all of, what, 2%? Here's the difference between 2%. Watch my hands now. You ready? Okay, there's what, that was it. That was the difference. There it is. Nothing. So that's a little bit disappointing. Just giving it a little more time here, just in case something interesting happens. No, nothing interesting is going to happen. 5 volts means nothing in this game of 300 volts. A little surprising to me, actually, that that's the case. Just a wee bit of heat in here. Okay, um, what to do next? Well, you know what I could do? I can put this on full voltage, 122 volts. That's going to push the current through the rectifier higher up into its range. Maybe uh, the voltage drop will actually see this not go up all that much. Maybe that's where we'll see the difference between the 5U4. So the 5U4 yielded 425 volts on this test. What do we get out of this? Okay, so I'm going to go back down again. So about 410 instead of 425. Yeah, 15 volts in 400 is just, you know, that's really not the best payoff. An old 5U4 might be good. <laughs> yeah, when you know, I've tested all my 5U4s and I know good ones from bad ones. Maybe I should stick a bad 5U4 in here. Bad would mean it has a bit of extra voltage drop on it. You know, the other the other side of the coin here is the 5Y3 draws two amps on the filament and the 5 U4 draws three amps. That's a 50% increase on one winding in this transformer. So word on the street is big honking transformers like this one can probably tolerate an extra amp coming out of the uh, filament. Smaller radios, the smaller transformers, you may pop in a 5U4 and burn up the transformer. Is this one getting hot? Well, I really haven't operated it long enough. You know, it's cold as can be, but I really haven't operated it. It's just been a few minutes. I really have to operate it for hours to really find out what this is going to do. Okay, so we're a little bit stuck here. Um, because what I wanted to do was do the alignment on this radio with it operating in this condition right here. Okay, so I was just putting the video together and uh, I realized I could go another step here. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do, I brought the amplifier in. Now, I'm not going to plug this in and power it up. I am going to plug it into the radio. What the radio receiver will do is it's going to send B plus over on this wire from its power supply. It's going to go through the uh, transformer here. And it's going to come back out and feed the tops of the two 45 tubes, which I will have in here operating. At that point, the power supply load on this guy's power supply should be normal. Should be normal. Then we will get some normal readings after that that I can trust and rely on. And we'll find out absolutely for sure at that point whether uh, the 5Y3 really makes a difference or not. Okay, I think my earlier tests just aren't revealing enough. Yeah, you get a good look at the uh, transformer that uh, the last guy put on here. I'm sure this isn't original. Uh, we know it's not original because the uh, bolt holes don't line up and you can see the old shape of the original one here, which is gone now. You can even see the shape around these capacitors. You can see the shape of the original one here. Okay, put the 45s in. There 
we are. So we're not going to hear the rate. Well, we, we, we could hear it if we wanted to. Why, what, do we want to do that? It is still connected. So it's just a matter of uh, manipulating a couple volume controls over yonder. We'll be able to hear what the radio is doing. This is still going to read B+. Plus. You have the 5Y3 in. So what we've done is we've introduced two more filaments here. Uh, filament current on the transformer shouldn't make any difference. But we've introduced a lot more load on the high voltage power supply, on the B plus power supply. Okay, I say. Let's let it rip. There we go. Okay, so the dim bulbs appear to go just a little bit brighter. This only went up. It's getting nowhere near the 400, is it? Now we are using restricted power to the radio, 95 volts right now. So we're settling in at 265. B plus. So we're going to raise the input voltage now from the 95 right to the 120. Here we go. This guy really wants to do 350. That's 350 in the power supply. What actually shows up on the plates of tubes and that could be reduced, probably reduced. Can we look at the plate of one of these output tubes? They will have the highest voltage on them and the answer is yes we can. So one of these four pins is a plate. It's the one with the high voltage. Is it this one? No. Where am I reading? I'm reading to the chassis. This may not be the smartest place to read this voltage. Here. There it is. So we've got 290. This is a great test. Okay, so let's just think about this. We got full voltage. 5Y3, we get 290. Everybody remember that number, 290 power off. I'm going to move our test lead up to that pin of the output tube. It's a more meaningful test. And you're really seeing what you're hitting these important tubes with. Okay. So what was that number again? It's 290. Now I'm going to change the two back to the 5U4 and we'll see what the 290 becomes. If it doesn't go way high, then there's no concern and I'm foolish to operate this radio without all of its tubes. And generally, you should expect some rise in the B plus as you operate less and less tubes. Okay, here we go to the sound of my cat crying in the background. First, restricted power just because. That's a good way to start. Remember now, we're not watching the supply, we're watching the tube plate. Oh my gosh, poor little cat. Yeah, come on in. Come on in. So it's settling out way low with restricted, and we've got not only 91 volts now. So we're pull, generally pulling more current through my little light bulbs. So let's flip it on to full power. versus 312. That's another one of these. Look who's come to, to join in the party. Now watch out. Things are a little hot over here. <laughs> okay, don't come over this way. Don't come over any which way. Let's turn this off now. So we've done the test. What this is telling me is uh, running with the 5U4 is probably not too much of a concern. 
and uh, hey, how hot did those resistors get? Power back on. Power on. So we got the worst case scenario. Full power, 5U4s, cat, everything's just, we're in the worst case here. Let's see what happens. Let me check the temperature of these hot guys here. Fifty is red. Okay, so he's up at close to sixty. He's hanging around. Don't read the white number. He's a little red number I'm reading. He's close to fifty. I think we're down. I think we're down here from where we were. Sixty. Sixty, you know, that's my limit. Poor cat. So this guy's running around 50. So I know that this this is a problem. This this destroys my theory that these resistors got so hot and burned up because the 5U4 did it. They look to me like they're still melting a bit. Still softening right up. Okay, well, there's more possible problems. There's biasing problems with uh, almost all the tubes. Uh, it could be uh, capacitors leaking onto grids, pushing them positive. There could be all kinds of stuff happening still. But I think with this arrangement, we can run with a 5U4. It's really not a concern. That's, that's where I'm at on that. Okay, that was interesting. I found it interesting anyway. Thanks a lot for watching. Um, I think alignment is next.